This week we head to the northeast area of Oneida Lake to the town of Vienna. The lake and Wood Creek form its boundary to the south, and Fish Creek forms most of its eastern boundary. The lake and its tributaries attracted first the Native Americans and then settlers at the turn of the 18th century. The town of Vienna was founded in 1807. It's part of Camden. It was first called Orange and then Bangle. The first settlers, the, the first to arrive, were hunters and trappers. Because of the lake, you have all these streams and lakes. Oneida Lake is the largest lake of its class contained in one state. At one time, there were 37 sawmills here. The farmers followed the hunters and cleared the land, and the sawmills produced lumber for roads, wagons, houses, and uh, fuel. At one time, North Bay had seven hotels. Uh, it had a uh, pharmacy. Uh, there were pottery mills. And uh, let me think, two doctors, four churches. Then it began to dwindle. Now, when the railroad was going through, they used to bring people to North Bay to picnic in the valley next to the lake. And then Sylvan Beach saw what was happening. So they decided they'd open one over there. Well, the difference between North Bay and Sylvan Beach is, first of all, Sylvan Beach has sandy beaches. And second of all, North Bay had a, four churches. <laughs> so Sylvan Beach developed as a tourist town. And North Bay was happy to see them leave. The town of Vienna is made up of a dozen hamlets and one village, Sylvan Beach. The area thrived with the construction of the Erie Canal and then the railroad. North Bay was a booming community and Sylvan Beach became known as the Coney Island of central New York. You can learn more about the town of Vienna in Brandy Ann's book, Around Sylvan Beach, available at Barnes & Noble and bookstores and shops in the area. She's a dirty two and they call her a coop and she really knows how to fly. She's a sheep machine, she is a mini and she almost touches the sky. Well, back in her day, she could walk away from anything that was wrong. Let me tell you, sir, I can say for sure that she'll Tucked away here on Littlefield Road in the town of Vienna is an old family cemetery. There is one tombstone left, the one that I'm standing in front of. It's Otto Cushmall, 1834 to 1913. He was a, a Civil War soldier and a teacher. And during the war, he would write letters for other soldiers who didn't know how to write. Buried alongside Otto are his wife and son. Fortunately for all of us, the historian here in the town is working to preserve this area. When I was a young lad back in the 1940s, my mom and dad would rent a camp here in Jewel. Now actually the proper name for the area is West Vienna. As a matter of fact, I'm standing in front of the West Vienna Free Chapel. Uh, it was built in 1878, but it wasn't really free because it cost a whopping $399.20 to build it. Don't you wonder what the 20 cents was for? And I'm not going to wait for happiness to sneak on through a door I forgot I left open. As you're driving on Route 49 between North Bay and Jewel, you'll spot this quiet little cemetery on the road. Uh, stop and take a walk through it because over here in the corner, there is the tomb of uh, 
George Martson, who was a personal friend and staff officer of George Washington. Legend has it that when these friends passed in the woods, one would say to the other, good day, George, and the other one said, good day, George. Another bit of Mohawk Valley trivia is this. George Marsden's wife was sister to Richard Henry Lee, who was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. To see what we can see. A rich deposit of clay near Mill Stream in North Bay attracted potters to the area in the mid-1800s. P.H. Webster produced stoneware here up until 1850. The same year, a Welsh potter, Henry Williams, arrived, and he and his son produced earthenware and flower pots. In 1851, German craftsman John C. Weldy produced stoneware through 1875, popular because of the hand-painted and stenciled decorations. North Bay pottery is still prized by collectors. We head back into town and north on Route 13, where we stop in to Whedon's Mini Mall. The Whedon family operated a furniture store in the 70s and 80s. In the 1990s, they converted the space into an antiques collectible and craft market, with over 100 shops under one roof. Whedon's Mini Mall opened in 1993. It was one of the first of its kind in central New York. You can come here and there are hundreds of dealers, thousands of things you can buy or look at. Behind me, for example, is really an incredible piece of, what would you call it? Uh, nostalgia or whatever. It's a replica of the Titanic. There are two in the world. There are thousands of rivets around this model. I couldn't help but do some shopping on my own. And fortunately, I found a hand knit sweater for my soon to arrive first grandchild. Whedon's Mini Mall is open every day at 10 a.m. and is closed on Saturdays. It is located on Route 13, one mile north of Route 49 in Vienna. At the intersections of Route 49 and 13 is the old Vienna Hotel. The original hotel was lost in a fire in 1914. The same year, Mr. Breidenbecker had a new so-called fireproof hotel built on the same site. Today, it still stands as a hub of activity. If you enjoy country hotels, head out here to the Vienna Hotel. Come on a Wednesday night and try their wings. The last time they had wings on Wednesday of last week, he sold 4,600 wings. Also, uh, what I had today, if they have it on the menu, be sure, be absolutely sure to have the Captain Crunch French toast. It's something totally different, but absolutely fantastic. We have a lot of regulars here. I mean, that's what we count on, especially during the winter, because the campers are out. They leave uh, probably September right now and are busy. It's probably March through September, but our, yes, our, our locals are what keep us going. We have a couple different nights. We have a clam night, it's three ninety nine dollars uh, for a dozen. Our wing night draws a lot of people in, 20 cent wings. We do a dollar drafts on Wednesday nights from four to 10. And our Friday night uh, fish fry is very big. Utica may be known for its riggies, but take a drive out here to Vienna. You're going to find out that their riggies are right up there with Utica's. If you want to try their riggies or anything else on the menu, come out today for lunch or dinner, buy one entree, get the second one half price. Travis, boy, do you remember? Travis, have you lost your mind? Travis, no. I'm enjoying the last few days of summer here at Carly's in McConnellsville, and they carry sugar-free ice cream here. This is butter pecan. Mm. If you want sugar free, this is as good as it gets. And uh, all of this ice cream is only $1.50. Head out here because they're closing in a couple of weeks. Mm. What a great way to end the summer. Traveling round.